Right, guys, so uh, I'm in the process of putting together a, a book at the moment called Poems from an Urban Clearway. Um, it's, I've been writing poems since I was about 17. And uh, what I'm going to show you today is just a little selection of, of poems that I've put together from, from my book. So I, I use poetry to kind of write, write about things that I don't quite understand. And I, at uni, I studied philosophy. so. You'd have a lot of kind of abstract concepts, and I felt that if I could write them down and play around with them in my own words, I could understand them a bit clearer. Um, so it's, uh, it's evolved from there. So this, this first one is uh, from a philosophy lecture about uh, Descartes, so following the, the theme of time and philosophy a little bit. But this is about free will, and it's about duality. And duality is the idea that um, things are very separate. Uh, Descartes likes to separate the body and mind, for instance, whereas I think that um, people are whole. You know, there's no need for that separation. So this, this first poem is called Dreams of Unity and Freedom. Cogito ergo sum won't ever stop my fun, because as I danced with my confusion, free will was not illusion. As I debated my delusion, I had more choice. I still had to eat, sleep, and sh but I bent the rules a bit. On life's great ride, maybe some freedom to decide. Basic plot's the same, but the story's there to change, energy to rearrange, to be familiar with the same, strange, to seek inspiration, to sing myths of our creation in this human situation, with the plan to transcend as much of my alienation as I can, with the minimum devastation and the maximum elation, as I dance with my confusion to clear the disparity between an inner sanctum and an outer reality. Because between your dreams and reality, there's no clear divide. You might think that one's internal and the other's outside, but there's no reason for distinction. There's no point taking sides. Gain inspiration from knowing that life's a ride and that happiness is created when reality and dream collide, like life and death infinitely combined. Dip into vivid unconsciousness and find clarity, knowing I'm alive, whether awake or asleep, knowing what I dream's part of reality. I'll take lucid dreams as my charity. So come with me. I'm going on a dream quest. It requires no education, no introduction, and this is your invitation. No rush, no need to run out and slip in dreams corridor. We'll stroll and we'll dance to these exuberant vibrations we encounter. No doubt we'll meet with the absurd. Observe those parts of life so recently so blurred. See then those parts of mind so recently so blind explode in your mind's eye. Bridge the gap in trusting what you can't defy. If it reduces your suspicion, know that I'm a dream technician and that this is my mission. And so could you be. Come dream with me. Um, so this, uh, this, this next poem is just a bit of fun, really. So, um, uh, I've been studying mycology, which is a study of mushrooms, for, since I've been in Swansea, really, about 10 and a bit years. And uh, it's something that's really uh, neglected. Um, actually, uh, uh, when I... Ted, one of the TED Talks was a great inspiration for me, a Paul Stamets TED Talk. Uh, it's amazing about mycology. Check it out. But, um, you know, they're, they're so overlooked in our culture, but there's more mushrooms probably than plants and animals combined. Have a think about that. It's staggering. And the, the amount that we just don't think about it in our culture. It's just crazy. So this, is, this poem's called Fun with Mushroom Puns. How did you come to cultivate such unrealistic expectations? It was a culture I grew them in. It kept promising higher and higher yields for less and less effort. My mind's mycelium turned my culture medium into some sort of culture extremism. Before I knew it, my substrate was saturated with all kinds of weird fears, hopes, and opinions. I had no intention of growing. My medium became the media so quickly consumed. Every madcap idea is suddenly mushroomed. So now my hyphae are hesitant, and I'm careful what I sow don't want to produce another mushroom cloud under whose spore-filled shroud nothing will grow. Uh, this, this next one is about cocaine and it's about the war on drugs. Um, I think the war on drugs is such a, such a terrible thing. Um, it's you know, one of the longest running wars and least effective ever. It's just, it's, you know, I'm not condoning the use of drugs. I think that people who want to get that out of it, they're, they're sick people, and they need a lot of help, and they just seem to get punished, and it it's just doesn't seem to be helping anyone. 
So uh, this is about cocaine and the war on drugs. An organic, not at all satanic compound was fine until refined, then mashed up many a mind. Enslaved cultivators made to work in silver mines. Cocaina's daughter, powdered pestilent snorter, stuck between reporter and exporter, transported by the war on drug supporters. Poor Indians, gripped by famine for sustenance still cramming, leaves in their mouths, kept poor so the CIA stash never runs out. And how much does a gram of coke cost? 50 quid for some crap that's been cut with speed? A lifetime in prison for those whose caution couldn't match their greed? 100 pounds for something really pure and refined. A drug so concentrated is guaranteed to mash your mind. And no one really knows how many gallons of chemicals were dumped in the rainforest so you can put that stuff up your nose. You think you've got Colombian fruit or your coca is Peruvian, but you've got cam pipes, not pan pipes, and you don't know what you're doing, man. Concentrated, twisted cultures, war on drugs is screwing and consuming them. But there will come a day when the criminal black market collapses, when educated consumers can test the quality of their drugs and know who made them, when the wrongfully imprisoned shall be released, when the sick, lonely people in society can turn to support instead of oblivion, where people aren't forced to steal or sell themselves, where dignity is restored, where we feel new inspirations danced ecstatically if we so choose, where we're told the truth given the statistics and don't sack the expert, where drugs are legalized. So, I, I grew up in quite a rough place and you know, I've been, I've been mugged by heroin addicts knife point, you know, and, uh, it took a lot, a big step for me to kind of feel sorry and understand how sick those people were instead of wanting to punish them, but I think it's the only way. Okay, so um, this next poem, I was watching a, a clip online, it was a press release from an expert on nuclear power, and uh, she'd done this conference just before she resigned and she was speaking her mind. I think she'd been waiting all these years to speak her mind about what she really felt about nuclear power. And uh, after we watched it, my friend said, oh, I'll write a poem about that. So that's what I did. And I pretty much paraphrased what her talk. So oh, she, was, she was the person that designed the power plant, the, um, the, the latest nuclear disaster in Japan when there was the earthquake. She was, she was one of the people who designed that reactor. And uh, part of the reason she was resigning was that she told them that it wasn't ready to go into production. And they built it anyway, and they built it on a fault line. So she kind of had enough of it by then understandably. So this is what she said. The reptilian brain is pathological. Mankind's greed, our greatest obstacle. Why do this? What for? The coalition of the willing has started nuclear war. And though we won't go up in smoke, they're using bullets with radium coats and spreading them over the sand in the cradle of civilization to poison the food for the coming generations. Concentrated at the top of the food chain, they're going to cause unimaginable pain. Nuclear families leaving trails of pollution and living half-lives, their energy carefully managed so they don't cause explosive change to tightly regulated systems. For a world in turmoil, how can nuclear power be an answer? It's just creating a race full of deformities and cancers, and whether creating electrical or political power, nothing is worth this genocide and slaughter. Einstein meant what he said literally, it's one hell of a way to boil water. You know, that, that, that talk was, uh, it was really shocking. Like some of the things the lady was saying, she was saying that um, there are, there are large, large areas of Iraq where they're advising women not to have children because they're pretty much all being born either dead or with deformities. That's just so savage, unbelievable. Okay, so uh, this next one I've, I've written after, I've been working with a lot of young people recently and I work a lot with uh, a lot of young people that have been kicked out to school or uh, labeled bad, you know, and it's, it's just quite ridiculous, really, you know. It's, not, it's made me come to think there's not really evil in the world. There's just mistakes on mistakes. And, uh, you know, either people not, not having the courage to, like, stand up to them or just, you know, just piling mistakes on mistakes instead of sorting them out, you know. Um, and the, sec the second part of the poem... Uh, is uh, inspired by an advert I saw for a charity advert, um, and the tagline was, uh, born, uh, no child born to die. So I, I think it's kind of, I think they, f they fit, though, together, 
because uh, you know if you if you if you're trying to force everyone into the same bubble trying to put 30 kids in a classroom and then telling the ones they can't handle that that they're bad people you know you might as well be killing them off cuz you're not helping them at all um, so i wonder uh, the 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 Towards the end of the poem, it gets a little bit, a little bit more um, hip hop style. I've got a bit more inspired by hip hop recently, and uh, maybe if you feel like it, you could join in with the, uh, with the chorusy type bit. So, uh, if you if you feel like it, join in with "No Child Born to Die." Yeah. Wickedness is a problem of love, for no man is born bad, but plenty need a hug. They say that good and bad are taught, are a product of society. Yet all there is is truth and a voice that speaks inside of me. Every man I've ever hated, one to them removed. I wish I'd sent some smiles, because those men, they'd been abused. The original sin was a mistake. Confusion searching for love created a load of hate. This is how our troubles begin, so don't be afraid to wipe the slate. Evil does not exist. These acts simply mistakes. Who really loses and wins? All are punished by the state. So ask, can you forgive, no matter what it takes? Because only empathy can solve this riddle of the snake. I'm born to live, I'm born to give, and all I take is responsibility. No guns, guts, car shit, rap and humility. Because there's one love, one dream, one sky. I won't let no child be born to die. I won't let no child be born to die. No child born to die. I have to spit some empathy, should have put it to some beats. Because man, it gets me down when I'm looking at these streets, and the people think they can't make a change when there is only change, and change is inevitable, and there's plenty of water, and plenty of vegetable, and plenty of water, and shelter for the needy. Why do we have to be so proud and greedy? It's your responsibility, it doesn't have to be this way. Everyone put a hand in the air, let me hear you say, one love, one dream, one sky. One let no child be born to die. No child born to die. And every child is born equal, a new blank slate, free from prejudices, with no concept of hate. So why should some have silver spoons while some struggle starving? when we're all made the same and we share the same garden. Your monetary wealth is worthless when so many people are so hungry and so few have so much surplus. We must believe we can find a solution. If we reduce greed, reduce waste, reduce pollution, we need an ecologically minded redistribution. We have the power, we have the voices. Hand on your heart, let me hear you raise your voices. One love, one dream, one sky. I won't let no child be born to die. No child born to die. No child born to die. Some eat to live, whilst others live to eat. And whilst the people are starving, your politics are obsolete. Superficial arguments about who gets to get fat. We need to help the people, because we're better than that. I say I'm wrapping empathy, trying to speak with humility. But we all have great power and great responsibility. So I give these thoughts to you. I know that I'll try to let no child be born to die. I help and share what I can, and what I can I'll give, because this child is born to live. Okay, so this, uh, this next poem, I've put uh, a, f a few poems about um, war and terrorism together. Um, it's just, just really explaining my confusion behind the whole terrorism thing and the whole war on terror. It just seems madness from all sides, you know, from the, the soldiers, the so-called militant people, you know, whoever. The whole thing is just, I just don't understand what's going on, really. So this is what this is about. And it's, it's also about um, how terrorism has been used as an excuse to take away people's civil rights as well. So this is three poems. This plows futility and the impossibility of collision between forgiveness and submission. So two men taken from their plows in different places were ranged apart and made to hate each other's faces. Each man told the other man he would ex expand, break the plow, take the other's land. Brave young soldiers with fat controllers, putting fear in their minds and weights on their shoulders. So strap a bomb to your chest. You can be the best. God goes loaves that goes out with a bang. Hide explosives in your car and you'll get far. For best results, use in a public place on those who are a disgrace to your God of carnage. Don't ask why. Just go and die. Jihad, crusade, holy war. Let's all go fight. Who cares what for? Suicide bomber, won't you learn? No matter where you explode or what you burn, nothing's going to change, man. You're just a pawn. But to the soldier, I say much the same. Has warfare become to you a computer game with responsibility somewhere higher up the chain whilst you sit back, hit a button, and watch the bombs rain? 
Is it easier to kill when you're so separated from the pain and your modern technology lets you do it again and again? Have you become a terminator with no refrain? At least a suicide bomber finds no relief in a corporate badge to hide his mark of the beast. At least he'll die defending his own home and his own street, not in a foreign country or scared of the heat and unable to understand the people when they speak. I bet though that I would stand and fight if my towers got blown up or if my house got bulldozed in the middle of the night. To see so much suffering will dim God's light until my mind became twisted to take life with delight. With terrorism and civil rights, they've been equated. Terrified when the people unite and terrible when they're separated. So we tiptoe along this comic, tragic line of unity and separation. Alone we're victimized and together we're a threat to the nation. But I don't believe that an organization with the desire to change how we live would kill innocents repeatedly but fail to shoot a single sheriff. You'd think people with no freedom might fight for their own, not form an Al-Qaeda to blow up another poor man's home. The futility of this resistance makes me doubt the organization's existence. And a newsman tells me that terrorists can devise a global stratagem to kill the people that hate the sheriffs just as much as them. Something here just don't make sense. Something that gets you sent to Guantanamo with no trial and no defense. Armies routinely kill innocents from on afar with shells, and those who oppose this militants are those that end up in cells. Remember, X and King were terrorists, Sylvia Pankhurst and crew. Gandhi's peace process, so frightening, the government didn't know what to do. Maybe the time's come for radical change, but anyone with half a brain knows that this doesn't come from bombs on trains or crashing planes. Change is in you, it's within your veins, within your brains. I'm responsible for terrorism when I disrespect my neighbor. I become extremist when I externalize my savior. Forget that I'm responsible for my own actions, my spiritual growth, my own behavior. When I forget this, in steps the church or the Al-Qaeda. In creeps the suspicion and the lies. In comes doctrines without compromise until I think that forgiveness and submission can collide. What a contradiction, what madness. The impossibility of collision between forgiveness and submission. So this one's a, a lot less heavy, it's a bit more fun. It's, uh, it's called the Lowly Trilobites Transformations. Everyone know what a trilobite is? Imagine like a, an ancient undersea woodlouse, but giant. Um, so I was, I was sat in the woods and I had a bit of a hangover and it was really nice and peaceful and sunny and this plane came over really low and noisy. And I was just thinking, oh no, be quiet, be quiet, hurting my head. But then I thought about it some more and I realized how amazing it was that it was there in the first place. So this is about the lowly trilobites transformations. Another peaceful moment shattered by jet engines in the sky. That human mind is surely flattered who melted rocks and showed them how to fly. And pardon this noisy contraption for the shattering of peace. It's the screams of a millionfold dead sea creatures enjoying their burning release. That lowly trilobite prototype woodlouse of the ocean through pressure, time and tides is now a means to jet propulsion. And rocks so glued to earth had only flown when thrown melted, beaten flat, now it's free to roam. So next time you're feeling low or thinking of life's impossibility, remember that a long dead trilobite can throw a rock full of people across the sea. Okay, this is my last one now. It's kind of a, a summary of like, what's the point in writing and reading the poems, yeah? It's called A List of Ists. I thought I'd make a little list, because it seems there's something you missed. Whether you be capitalist, socialist, pacifist, racist, spiritualist, fundamentalist, Marxist, Maoist, Taoist, mentalist, nationalist, optimist, pessimist, terrorist, economist, a gorilla in the mist, Oliver Twist, sexist, sexiest, biggest, smallest, thinking of slitting your wrist, narcissist, first kiss, nihilist, bliss, mist, ham fist, iron fist, or pissed. The health of the world comes before your disposition, because man, no matter what your mission, we all need it to exist. Thanks, guys. Thanks to Chris and Ted as well.